Welcome to the Mantis Compost Twin Assembly Instruction Video. You have chosen to purchase a high quality product that will consolidate both the making and distribution of compost into one compact unit. In addition to the construction materials included with your compost twin, you will need the following additional items. A mallet or hammer, a 3 quarter inch wrench, a 7 16 inch wrench, a 7 16 inch socket wrench, a 3 8 inch wrench, an adjustable wrench, a regular flathead screwdriver, and a Phillips crosshead screwdriver. Additionally, a second person to help you is highly recommended. Though the compost twin is not excessively heavy, a second person will be of significant help when moving the assembled unit. As for assembly, it is very easy and intuitive. Your completed compost twin will be ready for use in just a few short hours. And once you have finished making your first batch of compost, you begin to see the practical benefits of having a two-chambered compost system. Gone are the days of traditional compost bins or of single chamber units that make you wait while your compost forms. The patience required for these systems, along with the hard work of upkeep, will be a thing of the past. The Mantis Compost Twin solves the dilemma by supplying you with two chambers so you can make while you take and never miss a step. Now, let's go to the construction of your compost twin. Your compost twin comes with a number of parts. Let's check to make sure that all the required parts are present. The compost twin is divided into two major sub-assemblies, the support frame, or lower section, and the drum, or upper section. For the lower section, gather and organize the following items. Two C-shaped lower supports, two short spacers for the lower support, two upper supports with axle rod guides, two long spacers for the upper support, two axle rods, two middle support wheels, four gears, one handle, one plastic grip, one push cap nut, four spring pins, and eight two inch long shoulder bolts. For the upper section or drum assembly, you will need the following items two end caps, one divider, four breather caps, four breather screens, two doors, two door panels, two drum first panels, two drum third panels, two drum fourth panels, four threaded rods, two mesh screens, four latches, eight acorn nuts, four number eight self-tapping screws for the breather, two zip twist pal nuts for mesh screens, 20 number 10 screws, 20 number 10 flat washers, 20 number 10 caps nuts, 10 number 10 shoulder screws for the slots, 10 number 10 nylon insert lock nuts for slots, four quarter inch washers for the threaded rods, four end caps also for the threaded rods, and four spacers for the two axle rods. Organizing the parts into groups will help you assemble the compost twin quicker and easier. If you find you are missing pieces, please contact Mantis immediately at 1-800-366-6268 so that we can get them to you right away. Also, make sure you have plenty of space to do the assembly, like an uncrowded garage area. Do not assemble the compost twin in areas or rooms that would make it difficult to move the unit to your final location. Now let's begin with the support frame. You can reference this section by turning to this page in your owner's manual. You will need the C-shaped lower supports, the upper supports with axle rod guides, the short and long spacers, and four of the eight two-inch long shoulder bolts. Take the shoulder bolt and slide it through the C-shaped lower support into the short spacer. Make sure the C-shaped lower support is flat on the ground and the legs up in the vertical position. Keep screwing until the screw is finger tight. You will tighten it fully later. When you are finished one end of the axle rod, attach the other end to the second C-shaped lower support. 
Take note that the long legs of the tubing are diagonally opposite each other. Again, do not over tighten. Repeat the exact same process with the second lower support. Now take an upper support with axle rod guides and place it into the lower support. You'll notice how easily it slides into place, especially with two people. The top of the lower support leg is specially designed to let the upper support simply drop into place. Now repeat the process with the second upper support. Now we will begin stabilizing the upper section. You can reference this section by turning to this page in your owner's manual. You will need two long spacers and the final four shoulder bolts. Place the first long spacer as shown here and begin screwing one of the four two inch shoulder bolts into place. Do not over tighten. You will tighten all bolts and screws later. Repeat the same steps with the second long spacer. Keep in mind that this process can be done with just one person. However, as you can see, it's easier and quicker with a second person. When you have completed the assembly of the lower support, tighten all nuts and bolts securely. Now that you have completed the lower assembly, you are ready for the next section. You can reference it on this page of your owner's manual. Here you will need the plastic grip, a push cap nut, and the handle. Place the plastic grip onto the handle as shown here. Gently hammer the push cap into place with a rubber mallet or hammer. Be sure that the pinhole is at the opposite end of the handle. To finish the lower assembly, you will need the following items. The middle support wheels, the gears, the spring pins, and the completed handle. You will also need the axle rods. You can reference this section of this page of your owner's manual. Now place an axle rod end into the alignment guide on the upper support. Slide on a gear, then a support wheel, and another gear. Then slide the handle into the axle rod and align the spring pin holes as shown here. Hammer the spring pins through the holes with a hammer or mallet. Slide the gear over the pin while making sure they align as seen here. Now repeat the assembly process for the second axle rod. When you are finished, the support frame will be completely assembled. Now you are ready to put together the drum or upper assembly. Again, you can reference it on these pages of your owner's manual. You will need a rubber mallet or hammer, Phillips head screwdriver, and 3 8 inch wrench, along with the four panels as shown here. If you lay them down on the ground in this sequence, you'll find the assembly process easier and more logical to do. You'll also need six number 10 screws, six number 10 flat washers, and six number 10 caps nuts. Try to match the alignment of the panels as seen here and in your manual. You will need to overlap them. Notice how the ends are shaped, one folded and one straight. The panels slide onto each other as shown here. Note the snug fit. Now let's begin the drum assembly process. Take the drum door panel and slide it onto the first panel. Again, note the snug fit. Use the mallet to align the edges. Then take a number 10 screw and slip it through the alignment holes on the drum panel. Slide a flat washer onto the screw. Then twist on the caps nut and hand tighten. Attach the third panel followed by the fourth in the same overlapping procedure. Again, use the mallet to even out the edges. After alignment, attach the nuts, washers, and bolts in the same manner as you did when you attached the door second panel to the drum first panel. Remember, aligning the flaps is easy since they are molded to fit. Notice how the screw holes align perfectly. The mallet makes it easier to do the alignment. After repeating the process with all panel flaps, your completed drum panels will look like this lying down. Now the next section, the mesh screen installation is brief. You will need the supplied mesh screens along with the accompanying zip twist pal nuts. 
The zip twist pal nuts will be screwed into a pre-molded screw mount as seen here. When finished, take the completed drum panels and drop them into the alignment grooves in the end cap. You'll see an arrow which shows you where to begin the wrapping process and where to finish it. Next, you'll need five number 10 shoulder screws and five number 10 nylon insert lock nuts. Place the screws through the alignment holes and prepare to tighten as seen here. Aligning the flaps of the drum panels will make it easy to push the screws through and tighten them. You can use a 3 8 inch socket wrench to wrap up the tightening process. But remember, don't over tighten. Keep it loose, as seen here. Repeat the process till all five alignment holes are screwed together. You have now finished the first half of the drum's assembly with the completed half drum looking like this. The next step is to attach the latches. There are four of them, but here you will need only two. Each latch will require two number 10 screws, two number 10 flat washers, and two number 10 caps nuts. Now take the first latch and align it to the drum alignment holes. Place a screw as seen here. Place a flat washer and a caps nut on the screw. Tighten by using the flathead screwdriver and wrench as seen here. Again, remember, don't over tighten. When both latches are finished, the inside alignment of the screws will look like this. When completed, your latch will look like this. Repeat the process on the second latch. To assemble the second drum, you will need to start with the threaded rods. You will need four of them along with four acorn nuts. With the first completed drum sitting upright, look for the rod guide holes which already are molded onto the end cap. Place all four rods into the cap alignment holes. Then get the drum divider and place it on top of the rods. When the rods are aligned into the alignment guides, push the divider down onto the drum. Make sure the divider is firmly set into the drum panel alignment groove. Place the red tip protectors on one end of each threaded rod. Now with each hand, hold the rods in place and move the entire unit to a sideways position. Then hand tighten the acorn nuts. In doing it this way, the unsecured rods will not slide back out of place. Once tightened, take hold of the rods again and lift the unit to a vertical position. Take the completed second panel and align its edges to the alignment groove in the drum divider. You'll notice that the door openings are aligned in vertical parallel with the door hinge holes seen here to the left. Repeat the process of screwing together the panel edges by using the supplied number 10 shoulder screws and nylon insert lock nuts. Now remove the disposable red tip protectors from the end of each threaded rod and discard. The drum assembly will look like this when finished. Now you will attach the second end cap. This time you will need only four acorn nuts and four quarter inch flat washers. Take the second end cap and drop it onto the top of the second panel edge. Make sure that the vent hole lines up with the vent hole in the first end cap at the bottom, as illustrated here. Make sure you align the rods with the rod alignment holes in the end cap. The second panel edge should fit snugly into the end cap alignment groove. Lightly tap the end cap into position if need be. Next, take the four acorn nuts and quarter inch flat washers and place them onto the rods, which should be rising out of the rod guide holes. Then tighten as needed. Make sure that the flat washer fits down into the rod guide hole. You may have to tap it into place if needed. Tighten the acorn nuts 
using a 7 16th socket wrench. The last part of the compost twin assembly is finishing the doors. You will need the remaining items, which include the two door panels, the breather screens, the breather caps, and four number eight self-tapping screws. Start by placing the breather screens on the panel doors on the outside of the door as seen here. The screen should go first on the outside, followed by the cap on the inside. Hold the screen in place with one hand while aligning the breather cap with the other. The tip of the screen should fit into the cap. Take a self-tapping screw and insert it into the hollow part of the screen. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to tighten the screw. You'll have to apply some pressure to start the screws threading into the breather cap. When you have finished the doors, move the support frame first and then the drum section to where you will be using the compost twin. Place the drum under the gears as shown here. Then take the door panels and fit the door hooks through the slots above the drum door openings. Drop them down and latch them closed by hooking the latches into the latch holes and pressing down. Test the compost twin by turning the handle. A smooth turn means you have successfully completed your compost twin.